Hello guys, how are you? And welcome to another English video of uh, my series of videos in English. Uh, for those who were asking me, for the international viewers, I'm making a review of this microphone, which I have here, which is the Rode Broadcaster. Now, you are listening to it in a flat, completely flat, no EQ applied. It's not processed. Um, it's just the microphone sounds right out of the box. The microphone comes, you know, in a, in a card box uh, with a um, black pouch, uh, plastic bag where you get the microphone inside it, you save it there, and you get it inside the black pouch, and a single mount clip for mixed stands. This is a radio microphone. Which are the features that all radio microphones share? First of all, they are, in the majority of them, front address. As you can see, I, I am talking in this position and not in the classic studio microphones that you can hear, maybe this one. I don't see if you can see it in the frame, which is um, in a vertical position. I think... Um, because of when you have many guests in a show, it's more comfortable because you can see everybody and you don't have that bunch of microphone in front of your eyes and it's difficult sometimes to uh, see the other people around. The second thing that all microphones for radio uh, presents as a feature is that the, the microphone hears what is in front of it. But that cardioid polar pattern is tighter than all other cardioid microphones. What does it mean? As you can see, as soon as I move the microphone off axis and away from my mouth, my tone drastically changes. And n never mind if I put the microphone just right in the back. I don't know if you can hear me at all, but the tone of the microphone, the sweet spot is right to talk in front of the microphone. The other thing uh, is that the proximity effect on radio microphones are more controlled than other common cardioid microphones, which is proximity effect, that bassy, boomy tone you get when you eat the mic. In that case, I'm eating the mic, as you can hear, it is a bit bassy, but not muddy. Not it. Not it doesn't get dis distorted as many carrier microphones. This microphone comes with three layers of protection to minimize the plosive thing. Um, one is the classic grill that you see in every Rode microphone, which is the first layer behind that um, first layer, you will see a very, 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 very thin uh, metal grill, which is very, very, very thin. And behind that, you'll find a little piece of thin foam. Uh, so those three layers protect the microphone. If you ha happen to process the microphone through a compressor limited gate, like I usually do when I'm going live, I strongly recommend you to use an anti-pop filter because compressors tend to, um, you know, exaggerate some uh, frequencies. This microphone comes with an with a LED, with an LED, let's say. Um, to let you know that the microphone is receiving phantom power. The other thing you have in the box is a kind of adapter that you have to, uh, in the manual it says how, how to do it. You just have to make an adjust, ad adjustment in your cable so that the LED changes from green to red, whether the channel where the microphone is plugged in is with volume or on, so that uh, it lets the the host know that if he he's on air or off air. And the other side of this kind of um, plastic uh, attachment that 
you'll find in the body of the microphone, you'll see in front of it the LED, as I mentioned, and in the back of it, you'll find a low cut filter that is to remove any, you know, rumbling noises or ambient noises. Uh, this microphone uh, costs around $420, which is, I think, the same price as the legendary RE20. But in America, there are two, you know, industry standards for radio, which are the RE20 and the Shure SM7B. In my country, in Argentina, any single radio station use the road broadcaster. Why? Well, it costs less than half than other microphones, which are industry standards here, uh, like Neumann TLM-103, and I won't mention even the Neumann U87, which costs $2,000. And the TLM-103, I think it costs a thousand. This microphone costs less than half. And as you can hear, it's very quiet. And I'm not processing it. So I think if you, want, if you want to process it, as I will show you in a moment, like I always do when I close my videos, you will need a shock mount. Rode made two kinds of shock mounts for their microphones. One is the classic, I think it's called PSM1 or PSM2. But the thing is, the microphone, because of this attachment right here, the microphone won't fit in fit in the, the, the shock mount. So you'll have to go for the SM2. The SM2 is this same um, shock mount. And although the Rode Broadcaster is not listed as um, compatible with uh, this shock mount. It just fit, it, fit in perfectly. As you can see, I have mounted the, micro the microphone to this shock mount without any problem. Now, I will um, tweak a bit the uh, EQ to close the video so that you can hear the microphone processed and how it sounds in radio or at least here my mixer have an insert um, you need that feature in order to process a microphone in, in real time which is that um, insert basically is a send and return um, sign I explain this for people who don't know um, and you need a cable that in one end it has a quarter inch jack with two rings and the other end two jacks with uh, quarter inch jacks with just one ring so you plug the single end of the cable into the insert jack of your mixer and you plug the two single rings in the in and out of the compressor so what it does is the mixer sends the signal as it is, gets processed by the compressor, and then returns to the mixing board, right? Now, I will plug now the microphone through my compressor. Now you can hear how this microphone sounds, very radio-friendly microphone. Um, and I'm plugging this microphone in my um, compressor limiter gate, which is a, a Behringer, Behringer MDX4600. I'll show you my settings. Uh, this is how this microphone sounds in radios here. As you can hear, it's um, great. You know, I don't have to worry for placement because it sounds great. The anti-pop filter takes care of get rid of any plosives but if you want to use this microphone without an antipop filter well find the right placement so that your plosives uh, won't uh, ruin your take or your you know live show thank you for watching uh, this is the video for international viewers uh, i hope you like it and I, and I hope if you like this video to subscribe my channel comments welcome See you next time. Thanks for watching.